This is Musical Talk. Musical Talk. The UK's independent musical theatre podcast. Musical Talk. The UK independent musical theatre podcast. Hello and welcome to Musical Talk. My name is Dominic McChesney. I feel very guilty to describe Millicent Martin as a legend, as that seems to suggest something of the past, where she is most definitely still of the present. However, there is no denying that her place in musical theatre ranks alongside other legendary icons. She recently celebrated her 80th birthday, which means that she has been actively working on stage and screen for around 65 years. She has appeared in both the West End and Broadway in such shows as The Boyfriend, Follies, Side by Side by Sondheim, as well as TV shows such as That Was the Week That Was and Song by Song. Most recently, she was seen on Frasier, where she played Daphne Moon's troublesome mother Gertrude, and has made guest appearances in many TV shows, including Castle, Bones, Chuck and Modern Family. In 2008, she played Mamita in the Regent Park production of Gigi opposite Lisa O'Hare, roles that they both reprised in 2011 in L.A. She has two Tony nominations and is one of those very rare things indeed, the English triple threat, something we have not often produced. I was very lucky and honoured that she agreed to do an interview for Musical Talk during her birthday month. So, to celebrate her 80th birthday and 65 years in the business, Musical Talk is proud to present Tea with Millicent Martin. Good afternoon. Welcome to Musical Talk UK. I'm sat in the lovely Peninsula Hotel in Santa Monica. Santa Santa Monica. Monica, Having afternoon tea with the wonderful Millicent Martin. Welcome. Thank you very much. (laughs) (laughs) It's very nice surroundings. We've got a... Well, I thought if we're going to sit and chat, we must have somewhere pretty. Yes. yes. Well, this we, is very we, pretty indeed. Yes, and, and it's kind of it's kind of European feel. It's not one of the, the plastic hotels, so it is great. And we've I'm not sure whether it'll be picked up in the background, but we are, have a have a harp yes. harp in the background and playing. We're having afternoon tea. Afternoon I mean, tea. I, I, I think that's good. It's perfect. First of all, can I say thank you so much for agreeing to do this. I know the musical talk are over the moon at having the opportunity to chat to you. Absolutely my pleasure. I was having a talk with Os Ribbits, one of the presenters, and we were talking about English musicals, and especially the musicals of the 50s and 60s and 70s yes. um, in the West End, where there was a time when there was a real, the great English musical, which people kind of forget that era sometimes and some of the shows that appeared during that time and we were talking about various shows like Expresso Bongo and The Crooked Mile yes. and various things our favourite shows and, and the cast recordings and then I was sat at home and I watched an episode of Bones oh. <laughs> <laughs> and there I saw you being the murderer yes but that was with the wonderful gentleman who had been in Cheers yes who indeed was in Cheers for yes. many years it was great fun to do. They were a lovely, <laughs> lovely cast. And it was fun. Everybody thinks we're such little sweethearts and we're the murderers, which was lovely. It was super. <laughs> I do I do a lot of those now. I do a lot of guest shots because um, I'm living out in California. It's beautiful weather. It's sunny every day. My husband and I have a very nice lifestyle. It's very laid back and we visit friends and we have a home in Palm Springs. So we're very spoiled. And so I tend now to do mostly guest shots because it's not I'm not looking at 26 weeks of you know getting to the studio yes. at five in the morning and I love doing this other ones I did a castle I don't know if that's over there yes and, it has and like, modern has family yes I've seen both of those and of course um, hot in Cleveland oh. which is Betty White from from the Golden Girls who is my best friend we've been best friends for 20 years oh. and she's an absolute darling lady and she's an American icon as well isn't she I mean she's she's just she's just wonderful and we have to hide her away a lot because if we if we go out to what I call normal meals she gets so bothered and she's so dear she'll spend the whole time being lovely to people so we tend to have her over to our place and uh, we're going up to her home in Carmel for the 4th of July so so uh, she's no, she's a wonderful friend. I'm very, very fortunate. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that must be very nice. Yes, because she must get 
uh, all the time. Oh, and, she, and she's wonderful about it, but she'll spend the, the entire time being wonderful, you know. She won't turn anybody away. So She does that a lot, but then we, we try and find private things, private restaurants that she yes. likes where we can go. And it was my 80th birthday, June 8th. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. My husband said, oh, I'm going to give you a big party for 80 people. And I said, oh, no, don't, because I said... All, they'll, all that will happen is they'll walk in, they'll say, hello, lovely to see you, and I'll never speak to them again in the <laughs> evening. So he said, OK, well, we'll give you... He said, I'll give you ten tables of eight dinners. And I said, well, all right, eight okay. or six, it's like that. So the first one was Betty White um, with Robert Wagner and Jill St. John, who are very close friends. Yes. And uh, our best friend down in Palm Springs, Jill, and Mark and myself, and we went to a place called El Cielo, which is an outdoor restaurant with all the sparkling lights and things. It's just, it's just lovely. So I've been doing that. So my husband's given me a month, a birthday month. So Of, of nice little nice intimate dinners nice where you can concentrate yes. on the people and Sheena really Easton, celebrate. Sheena who is like our daughter, she yes. calls us mum and dad. Uh, she is in um, Vegas because she's always working there and yes. travelling to... Japan and goodness knows it were, but she was on her way to Japan and she flew in just for the day before my birthday and she spent the evening with us and we went out and had a meal and then she flew off to Japan. So we're, I'm just doing all the people I love oh, in well. dinners. But that way I can really get to to talk to them. Yes, you know? absolutely. Julian Holloway yes. and uh, um, Alfred Molina. They, they, we've, we've had all these lovely evenings. So... It's been great. Well, I appreciate that you've taken one of those days. <laughs> I feel honoured to. <laughs> no, so it's, it's, it's like fun. It's fun. And also, I'm happy to meet you because, of course, I got a letter from my wonderful niece, Kelly. Kelly, and she, yes. And she was the one that told me about you. So how did you meet her? Well, I moved down to Brighton and I got a job at the Sussex Arts Club just as a barman. And Kelly was working behind the bar at the time yes. as well. And we just got talking and I told her, I said, oh, I've just left drama school and I'm a jobbing actor. Yes. And we were sat at the bar one day and she said, oh, my auntie does a bit of acting. Like this, you see. And I, I thought, because I'd had this conversation with quite a few people in Brighton, is like, oh, somebody, some deer on the amateur circuit, you see. Like end this, of the pier. Yes, yes, end of the pier. <laughs> and I kind of went, oh, that's that's nice. And she went, yes, yes, I um, may know her name. And I was like, oh, yes, what's her name? And she went, oh, Millicent Martin. And I fell off my chair. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of like oh, in complete awe. So, um, because, I mean, for me... We'll mention it a bit later on, but for me, certainly growing up, my special treat every week was being allowed to stay up on a Sunday night and watch Song by Song. Oh, how lovely. So, of course, you know, I was very familiar with... with, oh, um, with <laughs> that was a very good show. It was a yes, nice show because great. It, 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 what I liked about it is it, it gave people a little bit of knowledge about these wonderful composers Absolutely. and lyricists that you, you really don't know much about. No, it educated people yeah. and... You know, they say, yes. they know they like that song and they like that song and then they find out it's written by the same people. Yes. But that's fun, you know, yes, because yes. Then, then you've got something that means something, not just a, a song here and a song there. You realise yeah. that there's a style that you love. You yes, know? exactly. Because in America they have a great tradition of touring theatre. Oh, yes. Most big cities in America have huge huge theatres and uh, um, auditoriums and things. It's, a, it's very arts-oriented, yes. America. I'm, and I'm sorry that, that England, you know, the lovely little theatres in the little towns are all sort of fighting to, 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 to stay open because um, here it's a, it's a huge business and you, you can go on tour for a year and a half. Yes, yes. And you're still hitting big towns. I yeah. mean, you're not, you're not doing the little villages. You're still hitting really big towns that have fabulous, fabulous theatres and stuff. And it's, it's a shame we don't have it there because when you, whenever an American talks about um, plays and, and classics, they always say, well, of course, the British do it best. 
uh, you know, because of the actors. And we and, should do. And we, but... and we, well, we do, we have the yeah. actors, but they should have somewhere to be able to go. I mean, I, a few years ago, I came over, Michael Rose, the lovely producer, did check it, who, whom I, I adore, he sent me this play called Cemetery Club, which had been done on Broadway. Oh, yes. And he said, it's going to be a tour. And I said, great, I have never been on tour. I had, in all my career, I had never been on tour. I'd gone and done a panto maybe in Birmingham or summer season in Bournemouth, yes. but I'd never done a tour. And to go around all the, the like the, the theatre in Bath, and yes. oh, just one in Stratford and, and, and Oxford. And see those. And... The, uh, the Oxford Theatre and the, and the hotels in Oxford are just beautiful and the theatre's lovely. I, I, we had the best tour. We did Chichester. We actually played the Chichester stage. They they managed. They said to them, "Well, ours is you know a little proscenium," and they said, yes. "We don't care. Please, we'll fit it in." And we sold out. It was wonderful. Now you did that with. Um, I did that with Anne, Anne Charleston. Charleston. And uh, Judy Cornwall, and uh, that was great. So that, but that was lovely to, and it was lovely to see the theatres. I yes. did enjoy. I mean, some of them made me want to cry. But at least I saw them. Right, you know. because of the state of them, you mean. Yeah. So, so. You know, pantos help the children become theatre lovers, but uh, the mums and dads kind of need to push them a bit, I think, to go to the theatre yes. more. It is, uh, you know, they say that a lot of children are really lacking in their schooling and things because there's no arts in it. There's no, they're not taught music, they're not, there's no singing, no. there's no plays. And it, uh, painting. Uh, if you if you don't have the arts, you're not going to have rounded people, rounded up people. Absolutely. It's, it's um, those arts are terribly important for children because it what it does is it gives them, which Betty White says in the most important word in the word in the world, it gives them curiosity. Yes, absolutely. You know, Stephen Sondheim absolutely. said he, now that he teaches, he said. His great joy is to watch the curiosity of the children. Yeah. And if they don't have that, if they come home from school and do their homework, and that's been a horrible day, and they just want to play, you know, there should be something going on in the school that just gives them great joy. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yes, and sadly, I mean, it is sadly, but it does seem like the arts are one of the things that get cut. I know. All very, the time. very quickly. All the time. So. And it's one of the most. I think it's one of the most important thing. For a, for a healthy mind. Yes, I agree. Because, I really you know, do. you've got to have that stimulation yeah. and it's not going to come there's from... There's got to be something yeah. better than trying to work out problems about yes. things. There's got to be... So it's not... You're not working the brain all day long. There's something that's working the soul. Yeah, yes, yeah. working the soul. Is, that's a very, very good way to put yeah. it, I think. Yes, that is true. Now, what about your um, your childhood, if I may ask, with um, with the th beginning of theatre? Did you go to the theatre as a child? Um, you taken? Oh, I don't remember going to the theatre, but I remember that I don't know why I wanted to dance. Maybe I heard some music or something. Uh, but at the age of three, I, we lived in Romford, yeah. so I'm an Essex girl and proud of it. <laughs> um, how dare they make fun of me? Uh, so I I went to a lovely lady called Edna Ball. I went to her school of dance, she taught ballet. Yes. And I went there when I was about three. And uh, after a while she said to my family, I think the child has talent. So uh, she said, I suggest the Italia Conti Stage School. So um, I, went, I went for some Saturdays, I remember being a kid and they did little shows and things. And then of course being that it was uh, wartime, yes. uh, I, my mother and I both got TB. Oh, really? So um, I couldn't go to school anymore. I was sort of homeschooled. Uh, yeah. Sadly, my mother died when I was 12 oh. from, from the TB, but I, I, I luckily got over it. And about, oh, when I was about, I think, 11, I went back to Conti's. Ah. And uh, my father said, I can only send you on Saturdays. That's all I can afford. And I went, I think, for about a term, and then Italia Conti, who was a wonderful lady, said she saw talent in myself and a guy called Anthony Newley. <laughs> so she gave us contracts. Right. Uh, which, you know, which meant that uh, 
we um, we only paid five pound a term, but we had to take like we took the tea to the teachers while they were You've teaching. You had to do all the little and we, jobs and we things. Did so. the, we sharpened the pencils and we put all the papers in order in the office, and we made sure that the kids hung up all their clothes while let, while. And for that, we were taught. Uh, for, so um, I was there from twelve to uh, sixteen, and then I got into a musical. Um, uh, called well, at fourteen, I went into lute song that Yul Brynner and Dolly Haas oh, right. did in London. Wow! At the uh, Winter Gardens, it was called then. And my dad had to take me because I was under fifteen. You had to be 15. so I was fourteen. So I did that for about six months, and then when I was sixteen, I got into a thing called Blue for a Boy, right? A yes. Musical, and uh, I was in that. And, Quite a while, and um, I was going to I was going to have to go on tour with. I think it was an Emil Littler, and oh, yes. Ian Paul was the wonderful man who ran all his business. And um, I was supposed to go on tour, and I went for an audition for South Pacific. Yes, and there was like three hundred people there, and I had six callbacks, and I got it. And the last time, Mary Martin came in to see the five of us because we had to cover her. Right, ah. So, okay. and she chose me. She said, well, done. So, uh, so I got into that, and because I had to then go to Ian Paul and say, please, may I you know, not go on tour? Yes. And he said, well, I'll do a deal with you if you promise me that if you go into South Pacific, you stay working in London for five years. He said, you don't go on any tours. You don't go on the tour of South Pacific, because I didn't have to. He said, yeah. and you don't take anything that you have to go on tour. He said, will you do that for me? He said, because I think in five years, somebody will notice you. So I made the promise, and it was, wow, well, I, I, I did Glass and Dolls. Uh -huh. uh, yes. And I covered Vivian Blaine in that. And it was almost like five years to the day yes. when I heard about the boyfriend. And I went to John Heywood, who had choreographed the boyfriend, and I, he was in Guys and Dolls as well. Yes. And he said, yes, come along and audition. So I had to find some music, and I got no money. And there was a music shop near me, but, oh, the sheet music was like maybe six pence or seven pence. I couldn't afford that. And I saw a basket, and it said everything a penny yeah. and I went through all this music and I found Jesse Matthews over my shoulder ah. so I took that, I learnt it and took it but I couldn't pay to learn the music so I learnt the lyrics, I knew how it went I didn't know what key the sheet music was in Wow! so I had fantastic. to just hand it to the pianist at the audition yes. and listen to the intro and I had to sing it in that key whatever happened you know, so you had to it, kind of wing it, it. Hill, it goes <laughs> one. well I did it all like Jesse Matthews and I got it the part and in those days you couldn't be let out of shows but because Guys and Dolls was um, the musical of um, Cure and Martin Yes. They were the producers. They were also the producers of Boyfriend. So oh, they took gosh. me they took me out of that show. They got my release from the coast and we flew over here with, with Julie Andrews yes. and Dillis Lay. Yes. And uh, I was directed by Vida Hope, is that right? Yes. Vida? Well, Vida? Or Vida? Vida. Vida. But it, it was only directed by her for about two weeks. Oh, because there was a whole controversy, yeah, wasn't it, there? It, and and, and uh, I, I can understand Sandy Wilson being very upset, but it, uh, it wasn't... It was correct. Asai Fuhrer, who was a wonderful, wonderful producer, he was watching it and he said, you know, this is lovely and, and it was lovely in London when we saw it. But it's not going to work for an American audience. He said it's got to be tightened up. And the four perfect young ladies used to just wander all around. He made us all be together and do exactly the same thing. So, right, so you know, he, yes, yeah, so... So when we did We're Perfect Young Ladies, we were all... It was absolutely so, the same. And, and, then... and, and he, he was right, but it was a shame. And it was very sad for Vida because... I suppose lovely. it was shame in the way maybe it was handled, maybe from the, yeah, it was, the, the well, stories you hear and well, well, it, it, interviews it, with Sandy. Uh, so if you just said to two of them, it needs to be sharpened up and, yes. and uh, it, it didn't work. So I don't know. We were kept apart from what was going on. 
Oh, that's, Sci that's fuel good. Let anybody know because there was like seven of us yes. and seven Americans. Right. You know, so it was going to be very hard because the American kids were very worried and upset when this happened, and they didn't know how we would react. Yes. You know, and I said we all but said it's it's not your fault. It's no. something else. So anyway, but he was right, and it was amazing. And on the opening night, they threw their programs into the air. It was like you know how people throw their more Yes, yes. They threw their programs into the air. They were screaming. They were screaming. It was. It was one of those magical. It was a huge and enormous hit, and I was very pleased to say because although it was, you know, uh, not nice, at least, at least it didn't flop. Yes, indeed. Because yes. that would have devastated. Yeah. It? But it was. It was a huge hit, and so that that was my fifth year. So I waited as he asked. And so it got, uh, got me that late. And what a, I mean, what a Broadway de debut yeah. as well, I mean, to... And that's my been... 60th year. We were here on Broadway 60 years ago. Oh, gosh. 60 right. years ago we opened... On your the, birthday? Uh, in May. Gosh. So, yes. And Julie's lovely. <laughs> she always says, yes, you can tell everybody that we've been friends, but don't tell them for how, how long. long. <laughs> <laughs> Because that so was that her first trip over here as yes, well. Yes, it was. So and then she stayed. It was. Did she, she? Uh, yes, she. Uh, well, she. We all signed a two-year contract. Yes. Julie's parents would only let her sign a one. Oh, that's interesting. They thought that was long enough for a girl who was only twenty years old. Yes. And so, um, luckily, that was happened because um, they wanted her for my fair lady, Alan J. Lerner. He phoned her on the off chance you know he said oh, we, we you know we would, we would adore for you to play her uh, is there any way you can you can get out because i know you've got a two-year contract she said i haven't i've got a one-year contract and he said oh you're available oh how wonderful and if then he history hadn't phoned, was made for yeah wow and she and i shared a she and i shared a, a, an apartment in new york oh, lovely yeah so she's a wonderful girl great friends and I uh, loved working, and we still, I mean, um, of course, on my birthday, flowers came from Jules. Yes, you yes. Know, as always, she's, she's a But I think friend. you do, if you are in a show and you have that bond of a company, then you never lose that. No, and, and, no. You know, it's... Um, it's like me with the side-by-side -side lot. I mean, Julie, Julie McKenzie is my best friend. Well, yes, and, uh, and, and, David, and Kernan, David Kernan you know, as well. You know, so. We lost our darling Ned, but had, and it was Ned who actually made me a star. Was it? Oh, that's yeah, because I had so. done I'd done the musicals. I was known for my musicals, you know, having done uh, Expresso Bongo and um, um, Crooked Mile. Yes. Um, but it, Ned asked me to do that was a week that was because I had done a couple of uh, they had these um, the six o'clock show uh, yes. on the television, the news. Uh, they used to do funny bits and they would do parodies yes. of songs so you'd use this uh, tune you know but they would write different lyrics and I went in and did a few of those for Ned but you had to learn them very quickly and I I have a, an almost photographic memory Yes. so um, thank you my father who had a complete photographic memory I did those for a bit and when he was putting together uh, that was the week he realised that he needed somebody who could learn to, songs and especially the opening song very quickly every yes. week. Yeah, because it had to be topical so it was written they almost put, They were putting stuff in on the sat on the Saturday at six o'clock in the evening I had to learn. Oh god. Now the opening number was always the same tune, no, but it same was tune, the, but the, but the, the week's things that had happened. And the the chap who wrote that was Herbert um, Herbert Kretzner. Kretzner who wrote Who wrote Our Man Crichton. Who wrote Our Man Crichton and then so, did a little thing called Les Mis. Yes, yes, that was quite <laughs> successful for him, wasn't it? So, well, I heard that I, there was an interview with him recently, I think, and he there was talk that Our Man Crichton might get a little revival. It's a wonderful show. It yes. was such a lovely musical. I hope it does, because at one point they were talking about bringing, bringing it to Broadway, and I think it would have gone wonderfully. Really? I think they would have loved it all, the Victoriana and, you know, everything, yes. and, and the island. The island was done brilliantly. Yeah. It was done very simply, but it was done brilliantly, you know. And working with Kenny Moore was such 
such a... Oh, yes. What a dear man. And that's, of course, where I met David Kernan. He was in that. Of course he was, yes, exactly. And now I, I, I have a few questions which yep. were sent to me by people... Actually, this was uh, very interesting. This is it, it actually links to uh, Expresso Bonga as well, and this was um, which was asking that because Paul Schofield and Kenneth Moore were both really actors and not singers. Yes. So th- he was wondering, did the how did that affect the show? Because or was that some sort of spin off from because Rex Harrison had been so successful in My Fair Lady? But that was um, we were we were before Rex. You were before that. Yes. So this was, yes. I mean. I actually don't... I know Expresso Bongo. Yes. But I don't know the cast recording of Armand Crichton, It's a nice one. So... Have a listen. So it's I a very, do. It's and a very, scene, very... And scene-wise, did the, how was their voice? I mean, well, Paul it, Schofield's great. It but was... It was, character and, it was great. Uh, uh, Kenny Moore sang very nicely. I mean, yes. And... and the character didn't need for him to have this huge... Like there was David Kernan with his wonderful voice, and yes. we had a couple of other yeah, people... Patricia playing, Lambert as well, didn't you? Patricia so. Lambert. And uh, Watling, Dillis Watling. Watling. And so we had plenty of, of voices, and, yes. you know, I got a big belt voice, so uh, that, that filled that area. So uh, Kenny was lovely, and he was, oh, he was so... Del- he was so the lovely thing is when you get a, uh, when you get a, an actor who comes in. I know we have now we have a lot of brilliant actors who sing brilliantly, yes. but in those days that wasn't the case. Yeah. We were not trained to do all three. That's where I kind of got my foot in the door was because I had learned to sing, dance, and act. Well, you were the English triple threat, yeah. and you know, is that, <laughs> if you forgive but, the expression, but yeah, it's, no, but it's no, true. But you, but, but you uh, were, and it was unusual for English people yeah. to do that. So with that, Ke- with that. Kenny, uh, he was such a wonderful actor that I thought he brought something to the musical that added and made the script so much more meaty because yes. of, 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 it, of the way he handled it you know he's just lovely and the same with Paul Schofield I mean you know if you're going to get my, it was so funny when I was doing The Boyfriend I stayed with a, a friend uh, over here uh, Paulette and she always you know she she was a, she played the, the maid in The Boyfriend oh Broadway. yes Hortons yes Hortons and uh, she was very into British actors she knew everybody you know, so, and so uh, when I got this part, I phoned her and I said, I'm doing a musical with somebody you like. And she said, who? I said, I'm working with Paul Schofield. She said, in my whole lifetime, I would never have put you two together, <laughs> ever. She said, I never think there would be anything you two would do. So, and Paul was wonderful. Really? And he knew, I mean, when we were doing the first read, yeah. Uh, we were all sitting around. It was uh, the Cadbury people. So uh, Mr. Cadbury gave us um, the reading at his house. So we were sitting there, and they put me next to Paul. I tried to sit somewhere else, but they didn't know him. And I sat next to Paul, and I was really nervous. And he, t- he bent over to me, and he said, I've never done a musical before. You will help me, won't you? And I was so... I was so insecure about it I believed him and I said oh yes yes I will I will and then I thought later what a sweet thing to do that's that's brilliant that's just so nice that somebody had that yeah yes no I I, you know luckily with them um, I just think they added to it yes with their talent oh that's very good that's that's just so nice that yeah I mean and also Kenneth Moore also had history because he was in the stage version and then the film as well yes, so yeah. it was kind of yes. one of those parts that he owned yes. so it was nice that he he actually did the the musical as well yes, so. yes, but let's hope that we see um our man Crichton that would be back. fun that would be that very good be fun. so whoever gets tweeny it's a wonderful part it's it, a no, wonderful part it was very different because they did, they obviously adjusted the story to make tweeny much more of a um, well yes she was she was kind of the she was the troublemaker, babe. She was the right. cheeky one. That he, he always was. He he really liked her, so, but he'd have to keep her in check, you know. So his whole thing was between me, right? Yes. Know? And uh, and then of course when they get um, shipwrecked on the island. Tweeny and he are the only two that know how to do anything. So, so we they be, become the king and queen. They become the king and queen. Right. But there was um, one song 
that was very fast and very wordy, lovely song. And one night Noel Cobb was in, and I thought, and I, I had done a show, one of his shows, and I thought, oh, if I go wrong on this, you'll never and, hear the end and, of it. You know, and, and the lyrics I can only remember a little bit is, every time I try to be proper, I come kaplomp and hell of a cropper, I haven't the grace to save me face at all. Like every night with the cooking in, kitchen, in the kitchen, the squalling and bowling and binding and bitching and carry right through to the master in the hall. But I try, yes I try, still the tears come to me eyes, and I try like the devil to do me level best. Yes I try, yes I try, till I damn near near he dies, cause I want to be a lady like the rest. But it was double that speed. Oh my goodness, wow. And the uh, come, curtain comes down, I'm in my dressing room and I hear footsteps coming <laughs> up the stairs. Where are you, you clever girl? I heard every word, every word. <laughs> wonderful. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, oh, that's it was, lovely. Yeah, it was wonderful. He sent me beautiful flowers and everything. So, you know, and he's just... Yes. That's what I love about the business. You, you get, being in the business, you get to meet the people that you just are crazy about. Yes. I mean, there are some I am absolutely people. wild about Benedict Cumberbatch. I think he is... Isn't he incredible? And I, we, I was at a BAFTA tea thing, which is, you know, the English BAFTA, and I, and I saw him then, I thought, I'm not going to miss out on this chance. And I, I thought, he won't know who I am, but I'm just going to go up. And I, I, said, I went up and I said, hello. I said, um, my name is Melissa Martin. And I, and I told him, I said, I think we are so lucky to have you because you have given show business a real shot in the Absolutely. And he said, he said, you have such a kind face. He said, you remind me of my mother. And I said, Wanda Bentham. And he said, you know my mum? And I said, yes, I have met her. And I, you know, because I thought she was lovely. And, and um, he put her and his father yeah. in one of the episodes of That's Sherlock. right, of Sherlock. They and play I his looked mother. at her, and we do look alike now. We do look alike yes. now. So I was very pleased. But uh, that's, the, that's the fun of being in the business. If it's people you really admire. Yes. To be able to just tell them and, and to see them. Yes, you know? yes, absolutely. And there is, there are some people who are, you know, coming up and, and suddenly he has brought... He's brought a whole new generation oh, to the arts. I mean, just, he really has. Just, so. just wonderful, just mesmerising. Yeah. Oh, I have a question about The Crooked Mile. <laughs> now, The Crooked Mile, I mean, I love the score of The Crooked yes, Mile. It's a beautiful it's score. It's beautiful. I mean, it's very... We were, we were talking about it and we were saying that it was almost very um, operatic. Yes. It is, I mean, the, the you had the great... Fantastic songs, horticulture, which yes. is hysterically funny. <laughs> I'm the girl with, with the it. superior wisdom, <laughs> yes. and all the double entendres, yes. and it it's lovely. just great. Yes. And meet the family. Oh, which that is was great with a uh, with wonderful. Liz Welsh. Yes, oh, what a what a wonderful lady. And she had the um, if I ever fall in love, with, oh, which is one of the most beautiful ballads. It is oh, gorgeous. It's so it was beautiful music. Yes. It was music, and. Um, of course, I've got this wonderful part of Cora. Yes. An amazing, amazing part. And on the opening night, you know, it, it did it for me. I mean, the, the applause was amazing. And we all finished, and the curtain came down. It went up to the last bow, and Elizabeth Welsh said, Remember this, sweetheart. And she pushed me forward <sighs> to get another applause. And she was right. I've never forgotten it. Yes. I've never forgotten it. That was, and we worked many times with Ned Sharon on television. So we did shows together. Yes. And I always said to her, that was just the most love. She said, I wanted a kid to have something to, you know, to carry with them all their lives. You know, uh, when this. things get rough or if people are not nice. Yeah. But there was this lady who had this generous spirit. You know, wow. Terrific lady. Terrific lady. Well, she came back. The, I think the last thing I knew about her was she did the. There was a concert version of Nymphaerent, and she came back and she did because she was in the original of with um, um, Gertrude Lawrence. Yes. And uh, then she came back and she did the same character she did 
like 50 years ago, but I haven't, you know, so, but she really was uh, quite amazing, so, and it's a beautiful, um, for people who don't know the score of The Crooked Mile, um, you should try and get the original cast album, because it's, it's just beautiful, it's It's, a real forgotten English classic. It's it's like, it's almost like light operetta, it's it's beautiful, it's there's some lovely stuff in it. And it was, I mean, that and Expresso Bongo, I mean, I, I was, when I was doing my research, it was, it struck me that that was almost mirroring the angry young men in the playwrights that the Expresso Bongo and, and Crooked Mile were quite groundbreaking yes because they were very hard hitting and they were about London life and about Soho life oh, yes. and about you know like gangsters and prostitutes and all the rest yeah, of it they, so, they, they were talking they were it, it wasn't a, we didn't make it all fancy they showed they, they showed the raw side of it yes you know? yeah and, um, and all the lovely all the lovely Lovely girls playing the prostitutes. <laughs> all, all my friends who were in the chorus of other shows got into it. It was great fun. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Somebody says, "Do you think that the Crooked Mile merits a revival? Do you think it would work?" Obviously, it was it was topical at the time, wasn't it? But now it would be a period piece. Yeah, um, I don't. That's hard. That's hard to say. I think that the other one, Our Man Crichton, would because it's a classic. Yes. This was written as a, a piece of its time. Right. And it's a bit worrying because, you know, we, we talk about that was sweet, that was. And yes, it's wonderful. And I don't ever want them to play any of it ever again because it doesn't, it, it's dated. If it's you dated. see it on television, it doesn't work. And I don't, I don't want it to be seen. I want it to be remembered. Right. You know, as, as something that was good at its time. Yes. Yeah. But there were, I mean, suddenly with TW3, there was... There were there were the two big key moments. I mean, and um, I'm, I'm thinking of the two which I've seen on YouTube, and uh, which was obviously the the Southern song. Oh yes, yes. I want to go back to Mississippi. Yeah, absolutely, yes. and also the Autumn of the Years. Or, yes, Autumn of the Years. Which, of course, is yeah. you know, and I'm glad they are there for because I'm I didn't see them, but to oh, see them now, they are still quite powerful. I mean, Autumn of the Years is. Yes. It's a real amazing piece of well, television. Well, you think that Herbie wrote that in, like, four hours? Oh, my God. And your performance as well, I think, considering the circumstances, is astounding. Oh, because I had, I, we the had emotion to, that must have been going... We had to put the music down uh, three times. I couldn't sing it up there. My boy, I was so devastated, and I knew I was going to probably cry. Yes. And I said to Ned, stand me in shadow. But he stood me in shadow, but the one eye that wasn't in shadow was the one that you could see it on a big screen. Yeah. Because I said, I don't want people to think I'm crying. To say, oh well, they would did, they did this on purpose, but uh, I had to sing it much lower. I just couldn't couldn't reach it. Gosh, wow! Um, yeah, I mean, the whole program was was quite well. well we was went. Wasn't we it? went so, in. I mean, we went in at ten o'clock on the Saturday, our usual thing, because it happened on the Friday, and we went in on the Saturday, and we started at our ordinary show, and I went up to Ned and I said. With 20 minutes into rehearsing this, we, we can't do it. And he said, I know, I know, I know. And he said, OK. And he said, we'll, we'll send everybody home. He said, everybody go home, come back at four. So we left at about half past ten and we came back at four and they'd written that. Gosh. In that time. And it was sent, the actual tape was sent to Jacqueline Kennedy that night. She got it the next morning. But what we realised was there was no copy. If anything had happened to the plane, who would not have had it? So it arrived, and she quickly made like, because I think Ned phoned them to the office. Said we need copies of that. They quickly did about six copies and sent them back. Gosh! But she put us in the Congressional Records. We're in the Congressional Records of America. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Our names and the whole script was in the Congressional Records, which we're very proud of. Yes. Wow, that was quite amazing. I mean, I, it's, I've listened to uh, Ned Sheeran, some of his... Uh, I met him once, and the first thing I was like was, you're enormous. <laughs> he was so tall. I know. This, and this, it was very direct. He's a barrister. I mean, he, he, oh, of okay. course, yes. That's what so. we all said. And he used to say to me, 
if I'd say something, you go, oh, you're such a silly girl. And I said, girl? Where did girl come from? I said, you're from he, Somerset. And then you'd say, and you can stand over there by the piano. And I'd go, okay, this girl is moving over to the piano. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so lovely. But I mean, he, he, he got all of us. He found all of us. So he, and he was the person who devised Side by Side by Sondheim, wasn't he? <gasps> well, uh, is that correct? I'm, I'm kind of jumping he, to conclusions. There. Yes. Well, what happened was, was working, I was doing Absurd Person Singular, and David Kerner was doing Little Night Music. And, yes. And I had been asked to do the, from the Slipper and the Rose oh, to the, play the, the uh, Fairy Queen. The, and the producer said, you're top billing. He said, I, I, I just, I, I can't let you take off two months to go and do this movie. He said, I'm so sorry. He said, but you know, if, if I have my top billing, I've got to... I've got to give the audience yes. my top billing. They'll start booking tickets. If they don't think you've gone, we'll lose, you know, all the booking. So I went and walked along to where David was, and I went in, and he said, can I have a cup of tea? And I said, yes, I'm fed up. And he said, why? And I said, I can't do this movie. And he said, hang on. He said, I, I was asked to do a charity show last Sunday. He said, and I did three different Stephen Sondheim numbers. He said, and the audience just ate them up. He said, why don't we do some evenings of Stephen Sondheim? Why don't we put it together? So I said, oh, that sounds great. He said, that'll help make up for it. We'll do some Sunday concerts. Yes. So we started to talk about it. And we said, who else shall we get? And he said, well, there's this wonderful girl who's doing Stephen's one. Uh, as she sings, where are you oh, going? Oh, um, company. Cars? Company. Yes. He said, and because she was uh, playing April. Yeah, actually. and he said she's just, but she was in there as an understudy, and the girl got sick and went home. Oh, really? Before the opening, and so oh, Julie, he said, come and see her. So we went. And I said, she's fabulous. I said, she's got the range that she can sing with you, but she can also sing low with me. Yes. So we went backstage and we saw her and had a chat, and then he said. Shall we get some others? Because there's going to be lots of singing. I said, no, let the, the three of us will hog it. Yeah. <laughs> said, so we said, I said, but you know, if you talk, it's very tiring to talk and sing. Yes. I said, we're 25. I said, why don't we have somebody to do the narration? He said, well, let's ask Ned. He can come in. He can take care of the show. And he can write his stuff about Stephen, and it would be the forum. So that's what we did. Ned, wow. Ned said, because we didn't know whether Ned would have the time, and he said, oh no, I'd love to do it. So he wrote all that wonderful stuff that he uh, talked about Stephen. And, you know, and it was it was great to have him, because it's it's so much easier to just sing. Yes. You know, and, uh, and it was lovely, and it just worked. It, just it was, worked. I mean, it really is... It took us ages to get the running order right because we put the songs. Do we do the songs chronologically? Do we do, you know? Ned said, "Well, why don't we do some about love, some about divorce, yes. some about humour, some you know. And so, and then we'd come off and say that didn't follow that very well. So let's put those over the top. And have them. So we just kept juxtapositioning positioning them until till we one night it just it just clicked. Because no, I, I think it. it was one of the very first, if not the first, show that was based on a composer's oh, work. It was the first. It, it was, was I think, and then the first there was one. all the others. So I think it was the first yes. one. Well, David apparently got in touch with Stephen to ask permission, and Stephen said, "Absolutely, but I can't think of anything more boring." <laughs> <laughs> so there you are, Stephen. That was one thing you weren't perfect about. Yes. Oh, by the way, on my 80th birthday, I got a, an email from him saying, happy birthday, darling. Welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, we, we, so we did uh, we did the four. I think we did four. We did, um, we went to Cleo Lane and John Dankless Theatre. That's we right, did yes, our very yes. first one there. And we did another one. Oh, I forget where it was. It was up north somewhere. Then we came down and did another one at Cleo and Jones, and then we did one, it was a theatre, a proper theatre, not an operating theatre, in one of the big hospitals. 
then I think they used it for talking and showing, yes. you know, cons not concerts, but uh, it, lectures, and lectures things. and things. Yeah. And so we did our show there. And of course, what happened was the gay community caught on to it. We, we had this wonderful audience at Cleo and John's and they, and they all told each other and by the time we opened at this theatre in London, it was packed, it was absolutely packed solid and, and they, gave us, they gave us the success they made us the hit we were because we did that year and then when we were going to go to Broadway the last night was absolutely amazing because they all came with flags of England and flags of America and they all stood and they held hands and we held hands up onto the stage. They came up onto the side on the stage. We were all and they gave us flags and we and we sang old Lang Syne. They all sang old Lang Syne at us. It was unbelievable. Wow. Unbelievable. They they, they uh, that was that was how the show took off. That's fantastic. And then of yeah. course it, it went to Broadway yeah. where everybody got nominated yes. <laughs> and you were pitched against each other. Yes. Which I thought was great. Well Julie said, if we both get them, we'll go up and we'll say, Ned and David, no 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 no, but we do. But it was lovely to be nominated. And, yes, yes. And Alan Bates took me to the Tonys to the nomination. Oh, did he? Oh, and the party and everything. Yes. So that was lovely. I had a, I had a really gorgeous escort for the evening. That, that was great. The dancing heiress. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I hadn't heard about this at all until somebody mentioned, and the, the questions was, was the dancing heiress any good? There is no cast album and only a few pieces of sheet music which reveal charming songs. Why did the show fail? I actually thought, I actually think it was rather good. Right. And I thought the music was wonderful for the period because it's all sort of set in the 30s. And it was, it was like a whodunit, you know, it's like the butler did it. Oh, right. It was one of those. Um, and Jill Ireland was in it. It was produced in America, was it? It was... it was written by Americans, and it was American producers. It was never produced in America. It came straight to England. Oh, it came England. straight to England, right. And I can't remember the name of the, of the composer. He was lovely. Do you remember the song, Guess Who I Saw Today, My Dear? Yes, yes. It was written by him. Oh, and, okay. So if you can find his name, he was wonderful, and he wrote all the, all the songs, and they were lovely. I didn't think the director had a clue. Right. I think they would have done better to have used an English director who would have understood the style. I don't know. It, 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 there was a lot it of was, it was shows. Well, there songs, were because were they? there so. was uh, there was tiptoe between the raindrops instead of you know tiptoe through the tulips. tulips yes. So it was and life is peaches and cream instead so life, life is a bowl of chili. Yeah. And they were very good numbers, and um, and I thought I thought which. That the stuff was staged very well, but they they didn't know how to put the script together. It, right. It, it just didn't work, and we we were put into huge theatre and things. And it, by the time we got to Brighton, yes, we knew it was it was not working at all. Right. Not working at all. And I was doing a matinee, and Paul Schofield said he was coming out. I said, no, he said, I'm coming. So he came to see the matinee, and he came back. And he said, I've got to jump on a train very quickly because you have to get up and down for an evening show. He said, but I thought, if I don't go round and tell her, she'll, you know, and see her, she'll say, that rotten sod, he didn't have the guts to come round and tell me it's terrible. So I've come round to tell you it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. I, I loved him for doing it because yes. when people sort of try and say oh, we're not idiots we're, we're yes. actors are not idiots no, no. but what we have to do is we have to try and do our very best with what's going on Yes. but it's fine for another intelligent person to come in and say Oh, I'm sorry, you're stuck in this one, <laughs> you know. And then we say yes, but it's right. but we did our best. You know? Yes. So, uh, yes. so he knew, he knew. That was, but I thought that was lovely that he came round and said that. That was yes. Because <laughs> I kind of went, oh, thank you, darling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, but the, but there was it, it. It had a lot of good stuff going. Yeah. It so it, 
So if they maybe had a little bit more courage and kept it, they might have been able to shape it you know, and written some new bits and that. But they, they, they just, it just kind of, it just kind of gone on with it. I didn't feel that they were prepared to do a lot of change. I didn't think any of the songs had to be changed because I had one Marion's on the make, yes, which was a great number. Really. Which is, I'm going to get into my low-cut gown. I'm going to shimmy, shake, and take the town. I'm going to turn the whole place upside down. Marion's on the make. I'm going to flash my fingers, roll my eyes. I'm going to scintillate and tantalize. They better run for cover if they're wise. And Marion's on the make. It was oh, a that's great super. number. That's and a real I remember like... the lyrics because I love the lyrics. Yes. Yeah. And I finally... Um, I gave it to Marion Montgomery. Oh, really? Yeah, because oh, she was perfect. a great and so, friend, and yes. I said, you got... know, use it. It's, yeah. a, it's a great song. Great song. Oh, that's great. Oh, I'm, I want to track that it's down now. Real, so. yeah, it's a real swing yeah. number. Well, know? I think, obviously, the person who sent that, that, that question in, he's obviously done a little bit of research, yeah. and so he's obviously found some sheet music, and like I said, it sounds yeah. delightful. Yeah, so, it, you know, it, so. it worked. The music worked. It really did. That's fantastic. Funny we mentioned before, but Anthony Newley. Yes. Because you were at Conti's together and you were both doing the little odd jobs in order to both pay Cockneys, your way. Both Cockneys. Oh, both Cockneys. They said, we, you know, they, at one point they said, we're a bit worried about you with Cockney's accent, so you're never going to get anywhere with a Cockney accent. Because in that time, if you had a Cockney, you only ever played maids and butler. And, well, and, well, like what yeah. they said, maids and, and toilet attendants. <laughs> when they when they had the, well, you don't, but they used to have toilet yeah, attendants. Yeah, no, I do remember, so. You know, if you yeah, had to put so, a penny in. Yes, And that's they'd right. give you change. If you had yeah. So that was, that was it, you know. That you were chosen to do the film version of Stop the World, oh, yes. I Want to Get Off, yes. which I saw, I, I have, there's one little clip on YouTube, which yes. is, oh, there's a couple of little clips, yeah. um, and it's wonderful to see that, and it's typically yes. English, it, uh, which is it, a lovely number. It, it, it's a, it, it's a it didn't channel. quite work, because uh, our producer, we, it was the first time they were using three-cat multi-camera for a film. Ah, right, okay, and, yes. uh, he didn't. he chose not to tell any of the actors that camera one was running all the time. And so he then edited it to his specifications, but we had been directed to do the performance for the three cameras. So what happened was it was very disjointed and like we'd be looking in the opposite direction because we were looking towards camera three and he'd still got his camera one running. So um, it was very it was very distressing that he took what was a wonderful, wonderful show and uh, chose to uh, manipulate it like that. Yes. Um, but uh, it was lovely to work with Tony Turner. Yes, yes. He's such a, such a delightful He's man. He's an L.A. resident now, isn't yes. he? So, yes. I haven't seen him in many years, but he was, he's just wonderful. And I, and I love doing it. But, and, and Tony, bless his heart, I said to him, you know, when I'm a typically English, there's typically English, there's typically Russian, and then typically German. Yes. And I said, I find the Russian and the German a bit close. I said, do you feel like writing another one? So he wrote typically Japanese. Yes, that's right. And that's specifically in the, in in the, the movie film, version. That's, only, that's the only in the movie. That's yes, right. to get to have a different thing so we could have a scene that was different. Yes, you know? yes. Um, and so he wrote that. Bless his heart. I'd forgotten that. The last time I went to see him at, uh, he was doing a, a cabaret, a wonderful old restaurant and cabaret place that's on Regent Street. I can't remember the name. It's all red seats and everything. But so I went to see him, and I went with a guy called Mark Curry. Do you know Mark? Oh Curry? yes, yes, yes. Uh, and, and I was doing uh, noises off with him, and, and he said, "Oh, I'd like to come." I said, "Now." Tony's not been well. I said, if his voice has gone a bit, and that, I said, I don't want you to sit there going, oh, no, no. I said, I want to go and really enjoy him. And he said, no, 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 I would love to. And we went, we had the most wonderful time. He was stunning. But the intro was what broke me up. He, when they do the drum roll, and he did his own intro, ladies and gentlemen, and he said, tonight we are thrilled to have writer, singer, Actor, composer, dancer, bon vivant, <laughs> Anthony Newley, of whom Joan Collins once said, Next! <laughs> that, was, 
That was his intro for himself. <laughs> That's wonderful. Oh, oh uh, my God. Oh, because Tony used to write, he used to write our end of term shows. Oh, did he really? At Conti's. Oh. Yeah, and I did one song, and I cannot remember the only thing, I can only remember the title, which was, I remember the little bit of melody, Why Must I Always Be the Lonely Second Fiddle in the Love Concerto? And that was one of the first things he wrote. Wow, isn't it so? So that was, that's my, uh, Tony, and, and of course we were so thrilled when he got uh, Oliver Twist, we were all so yes. proud of him. Well, know? I just watched him recently in Vice Versa, and he's in it with oh. Petula Clark, and of course they're kids. Oh, and yeah. he's incredible. I mean, he really was the most amazing talent, oh. and so... Yeah. oh no, 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 no. lovely. Heading back to 1975, you did The Card with Jim Dale. I did, I did. I think it ran about six months. Okay. So I, 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 thought it, I thought it should have done a bit better. Yes. I thought it, I thought it should have run a bit longer. It got, um, revived, it got revived later, but I think they cut a lot of the original music. Yeah. That's, um, that's Cameron McIntosh's favourite show. And Is he, it really? He redid it, yeah. Oh, that's why. Ah, right. Yeah. Now, was that the first time that you'd worked with Cameron? Or? Uh, yes. Right. That was, so, uh, yeah. No. And then... Uh, well, no, the, 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 the number I did was his favourite number. Not, 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 it was Wiki his favourite show. or Leave... No. No. no um, leave um, me. Tra- I'm going I'm to be moving on. Oh, yes, of course, yes. That's, that's, that's a great that, number, that isn't it? That's his favourite number. It's a real pal- power ballad sort of <laughs> musical comedy power ballad. So. Yeah, I was lovely working with Jim. Yeah. And he's, he's great. I, I went to New York a, a few months ago, and every time I go, I see him, and he's got this one-man show now. Oh, let's have lunch. We went to a restaurant called Fiorello's, and we sat right at the back in the corner, and he told me about the one-man show he was writing, and he sang me a couple of the numbers, had me on the floor. I mean, he, he is so funny, and the stuff is so good. And it took him a long time. I think it took him about a year to get it together. Yes. And uh, I just saw a review. It, I don't know where he did it, but it is absolutely amazing. It's absolutely one of the best things he's seen in, in years. And that's on at the moment. So. I don't know. I think he just did a, 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 a couple of special evenings. Right. To try and test the waters yep. and see whether but, how but, it was. Uh, oh, I hope he I hope he does. I want him to bring it here so I can yes. see. Otherwise, I've got to get, go to New York again to see it. But he's, uh, oh, he's such a talent. Yes. And let's hope that the, the show, we see more of that and it kind of yeah. takes off. He's lovely. He's so, lovely. That was wonderful. Well, so, so he did the card... And then, of course, he went on to do things like Barnum. Yep. Yes. And, yeah. then, he, and then he did um, Oliver Twist. I saw him do that. Oh, he played Fagan, did yeah. he? So, oh, oh, I saw him do that. He was yes. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And um, the other one, Me and My Girl, he did on Broadway. Oh, did he? He took over from he, Robert Lindsay. He took then, over so, from yes. Lindsay and, and did it. Then. Luckily, my nieces were over. So I was able to take them to so that, which Bianca I love. And and Bianca. Oh, but, yeah, but, <laughs> I know Bianca as well. Yeah, yeah but, but uh, um, actually it wasn't old enough, so it was Bianca and Kelly came. Oh, yeah, them, yeah. And they got to see the show. And it was like, fabulous. <laughs> I'm going to mention a show you did at Olympia side by side with sometime. You toured in that round America with Hermione Gingold. No, we, uh, oh. all we did, we did, we went down to Florida. Yes. And then we came straight to Los Angeles and we did it for three months. Oh, they right. did a tour afterwards, but I didn't do it and neither did Hermione. Ah, okay. So we just came in and we did three months here, which was a, was a huge hit at the Huntington Hartford Theatre. Yes. Huge hit. We added an extra month because it was so good. And that's where I met Betty White. Cause she and her ah, husband, Alan Ludden, well. who is, uh, sadly lost him a long time ago, but he was... Uh, uh, he did in game shows. He was the a host in, the ga- in uh, Password and things like that. Oh, I see. And that's how Betty met him. Right. Was, uh, really, uh, and they, they came to. They must have come to see the show about six times. And of course, I, I realised that she'd got the same kind of humour because they came round, and she said. I don't know why we came to see you again. You're not that good. So, so then the next time she came round, I said, "What are you doing here?" Yeah. So, it's all, so we we realised you realised that you did have that same. That's great. So, uh, so. so then I lost track of her because I went back to New York and, and uh, 
I was gone a long time, but when I came back about 20 years ago to do a lot of television, and then we decided to move once my husband had retired. Yes. We decided to move out here. Then I, I met up. I, met up with Betty again so we've been best friends now for about 20 years and then you got the chance to work together on Hot in Cleveland yes yes so. and I said and also I, with Jane I, um, Jane Leeds so, yeah. when, when I, I came to see the show before I did, was sitting in the audience and they said cut on something and Jane looked up and went mummy <laughs> which is great yeah. and so I said to Betty that was very sweet of me and she said what and I said the guest shop she said no 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 she said that was that was her lovely agent he read and said oh we'll, we'll, we'll put Millie in it which is lovely so, uh, so it was lovely to work with that yes absolutely fun. they said everybody said the two of you are just sitting there screaming with laughter all day we go we, we sit, my husband and I see her probably hopefully once a week if we can or once every ten days and we go with this one special restaurant we really like we go there and it's, it's table in the corner and we talk and laugh <laughs> and every time when we leave she said it's a shame we couldn't find anything to talk about I mean we never stop oh my goodness it's just amazing it's but I think amazing. watching clips from things that you've done over the years it's it's your comedic talent which is so fantastic and oh, it's, it's you. just well, your, your comedy and the timing and just your style is it's just superb it's a very English type of humour which I think works very well here if yes. people can well, pull it off. When, we first, when I first came over, you know, it's 37 years yeah. and I used to feel a difference in the humour. Yes. And you'd have to work at it to... You know, but now uh, the American humour has completely changed. It used to be one-liners. Yes. But now they, they've got a fabulous sense it's of It's become more sophisticated oh, now. And, 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 and they yes. get it. I mean, people used to say, oh, but the Americans have a strange sense. Not anymore. Americans have the same sense of humour as yes, the British. Exactly. You know, it, 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 because it's all, it's all melded together. It's like, you know. Yeah. You stir it all up, and there it is. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And that happened because I, you know, I mean, I was singing a lot, and then I had a, I had to have a throat operation about oh, 25 years ago. Okay. And uh, I could still, I could still what I call perform. Yes. But I, uh, I, I would not take on. I did take on one uh, musical. Uh, what, uh, whatever happened to Baby Jane? Oh yes, I yes, which I, I saw in uh, Brighton. So. Oh, yes. you saw the, yes. the, concert. the concert. Well, then, when we then we did it over here as a musical. Yes, in Houston. In Houston, yes. Oh, you do know you. So, okay. and it uh, it was a wonderful part to play, and I and it had fourteen numbers, and I I sang them very well and enjoyed them. Yes. But because I thought I don't know how long with an operation the voice is going to last, so I'm, and it forced me to do more comedy. I then went into the comedy thing and yes. did so much music and stuff, and that was it was a blessing because uh, it got me into the comedy side, which I'd always loved. Yes. But I tended to, you know, always want to sing. And so, but, you, but you'd done a lot of comedy when you'd had your own television series, hadn't you? When you'd yes. had Millicent, because you uh, had all yes, the sketches. Yes, I loved and that. But, but then after that, I didn't do any... I, you know, a, a comedy shows kind of went out, especially comedy shows with music. Right. Over here, there was not a, nothing musical on. Absolutely nothing on television that was musical. Oh really? Was this so? Thing. This was a, the period when it stopped here yeah, because it, it, they had because they did have like they, the they Carol was, Burnett show and all the rest of it. There was a big chunk of good time and twenty five years when really? no musical, and then it suddenly started to come back onto a television again. So it was good for me because it pushed me into the comedy, which turned out to be the thing I loved the most. Yes, because I, I'd, I'd love to do Sweeney Todd. You know, I'd love to do, that, but. Uh, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get to a point where you, you you find the thing you love the most, and I found that that's a, that's a comedy. Yes. You know. But if you get and if you get the right part as well, I mean, uh, Jane was a wonderful part. I mean, and I mean Houston. I've seen some clips, and, and yeah. the one thing that terrifies me is that staircase. Oh, oh, the honey. staircase at the side of the, the stairs. Set. It's like you're going down the north face of the Eiger, I, 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 and those heels. I had to have <laughs> stair music. I mean, the set was it was on two levels, and it was and uh, and the 
bedroom was 40 feet from the first row of seats. Oh my God. It was, it just was terrible and it was absolutely wrong. And I said, you look at that bedroom and she's singing four walls with a chair and chimney. Choose one and stare. I said, she's in the most wonderful bedroom. She, <laughs> in the world. Yes. She would just be thrilled to be. I said, she's supposed to be claustrophobic in a little bedroom. Like, you know. Yeah. And so it, it just it just didn't work. So and, the design, and, it was the design yeah, of it that and, was. And, yes. and we had we got such wonderful ideas about it with uh, with Michael Rose. And I, and, and I think the group... They all got a bit scared because it was a black comedy. They, we, they still don't, you know, it's like Sweeney Todd. It's yeah. very hard still over here for black humour. Yes, yes. And I think they panicked. Right. And I think they did a pretty set and, uh, you know, and they, that'll, that'll yeah. take the... Yeah. And, and it, it didn't need it. It could be almost a chamber piece. I mean, it's it, it's kind of like it's a, it would be it would be wonderful. Just the house should be as so though it was grand at one time, but it should be a wreck. Yeah, yes. We've got no yeah. money. We've got nothing, and it, that would have that would have would have done it. You yeah. Know. But it was a shame. But but it was the best part I've ever played. It was the best part I've ever played, and the audience did react to that. I it was, that, I mean, yeah. it was wonderful to see it, and funnily enough, all the, the creatives, everyone was staying at the arts club, so I got to talk with Hal Hackaday and Lee Pokris, um, and I got him to sign a couple of my oh, albums yes, of his yes. shows, like to Varage yes, and things. Yes, yes. So, and, and he and his wife were lovely, and, and um, oh, they Henry were Farrell wonderful. as well. Was yeah. it Henry Farrell? And, uh, uh, Charles Farrell. Charles Farrell. Who wrote the book. Who wrote yes. the book. Uh, that, um, that turned out to be, the, uh, uh, sadly, the sticking point, one of the big sticking points, because when we did the concert, uh, yes. it was just a little dialogue here, a little dialogue there. You I were said, just leading in yeah, and you had the narrator as well. I said to well. Michael, let's do a concert to find out if the music is going to hold. Yes. Because if it's not, then don't go any further. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and, and Charles was fine about just having a little bit of dialogue, but when we did the show, he would not cut word one of anything oh really and the scenes went on way too long and it, he wouldn't do anything sadly um he was he was then quite old and i think he got to the point where he just didn't, didn't want to listen didn't, right. want to, didn't want to try anything and that was what ruined it that's very sad yeah, so because uh, if we could have cut dialogue right down we might have been able to get away with the set if it was more of just a musical yes yes but and things you know that, uh, but you with, with have, new shows you have to yeah, adapt and you, you have to find your have fit 20 minute scenes no you know uh, yeah. that, that, that are in a, a set that doesn't work and yes so, that was the sadness of it, but I still loved playing the part. It was wonderful, and I mean, I remember watching... This is going to sound a little bit gushing, I'm afraid, so... But I remember watching it, and there was the, the number you did with the sister in the wheelchair, and you're pushing her. Oh, yes. And I sat there, and I went... And it was one of those moments where I just went, that is absolute star quality. <laughs> and I just... I, I knew that I was watching <laughs> raw star quality because you were effortless it was effortless your performance was so spot on and absolutely there and yet oh, it was you, you made it look it. you made it look like the easiest thing in the world but we knew it wasn't and that and that was yeah. it was just well, wonderful it was, it, thank you it was it was i loved doing it yes. i loved doing it i was very sad that it it didn't that, go that, further i was very sad because michael is the most wonderful producer and he takes yes. such care he takes such care of his actors and he takes such care of his productions and his work and he was let down. Yeah. And I felt so sorry for him. And uh, our director, who was wonderful, David Taylor, because Henry sat next to him every day and told him how it should be done. It was very sad. But I'm glad. But I'm glad we did the concert because it proved to all of us that there was stuff there. Yes. Yes, there was. It was. You fun. know, it, it was. was fun. It was a little bit of one of those magic moments. <laughs> though. <laughs> I'm going to go back in time a little bit. Yes. To King of Hearts. Because you got a nomination for Tony Award for King of Hearts, but that's again that's one of those forgotten musicals now, isn't it? It's not based on the film. Yes, um, based on Alan Bates' film. Based on the Alan um, Bates film. It was before its time. Right. If Stephen Sondheim 
and Steven Spielberg had been putting on his films with fantasy. Yes. If there had been more of that fantasy around, um, like Neverland and things yes. like that, that show yes. would have been a huge hit. The audience did not know because it's it's a fantasy. You know, you know the, the story. It's um, the, the town is occupied and the Germans flee or something. So they they they're going to bomb the town. They're oh, going to flatten right. it in three days and everybody's got to leave. And they suddenly realise after they've all left, the, the English soldiers say, the asylum. Nobody told anybody in the asylum up on the hill. Yes. And so they send one guy, Malabets, to come back to get them and lead them out of the town. Right. And they have noticed that nobody's around and they've come out and they've come down into the town and they've taken over. The guy said, oh, I always wanted to be a butcher. I always... And I take over Madeleine's nightclub because I want... I've always wanted to have this, you know, this thing. And so they're all there doing their lives and he comes into the town and he falls in love with the daughter of one of the crazies. Right. Which is a thing. And he finds out, he ha he, instead of leaving them out, he finds out where the bombs are. Oh, and, right, and, and he diffuses them. He diffuses And he leaves and and so then the town. They, and then they go back up into their little... Oh, it's quite sad, they yes. all go back up to their place, but they've had these wonderful three or four days of being all these people. And being kind of normal. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I guess I'd, I'd sing one thing where I'd just sing, is it magic? Be here, the music, the magic, you know. Uh, that was lovely, but uh, we were the we were the most expensive flop ever on Broadway. That really? was when it only Before cost... Before Spider-Man, of course. Six, <laughs> like, the ours only cost six million. Right, OK. But it, um, it, it was a shame because it was lovely. Yeah. The sets were too big. We were, we were up in Boston at the lovely theatre there, and we had half the sets because it couldn't fit into this theatre. And... It went brilliantly. The audience loved it. It was a huge hit. We came down and we put it to the Minskoff Theatre on Broadway, which is like a 3,000-seater, and the rest of the set came in. And it was Santa La Cuesta, who is the most brilliant designer. Yes. But he had to design for this huge stage. Oh, the design that he'd done up in, the, in Boston was perfect. Right. If we could have come down to a small theatre, I think we'd still be running. Yeah. So, um, so, uh, were, so it was a shame. Oh, goodness. That's such a shame. Because there's a cast album. There's yes. two cast albums, actually. There's yeah. the cast album. There's also a live recording. They, did, they, did, a, they did another one, didn't they? Oh, was there a live there, recording There was a live of recording of it. So, uh, oh, um, yes. That was, that was our closing night, wasn't it, I think? I believe so. I think. That, was, that was very good music. Yes. It was very good. It was really good. And it had been a small production up somewhere in like Connecticut before us, and it was wonderful. And that, the fact that they didn't say it's got to stay small. So they, they it, it misread been, the tone of it. Yeah, it should so. have been in the same theatre that uh, Jim Dale did Barnum. It should have been in that right. kind of theatre. It was perfect. Yes. It would have been. But instead, you were on this enormous stage, so. But you did get a Tony nomination for I it. I did. And a, your second Tony nomination. Yes, so, which was lovely. Yes. Which was lovely. And uh, Ron Field, who was the director, he was he was thrilled. He phoned me and he said, oh, thank you, darling, thank you, darling. At least something was, you yes. know, positive about the show. Yeah. After that, of course, there was the song by song period. Uh, Those Owen. were fun. And Those there was a fun. magic between you and Julia McKenzie and uh, David Cohn. And if I'd had like a wish list, my wish for this would be an interview with the three of you talking. <laughs> that, I think that would be just probably stupendous. I think that would be so, such good fun. Some of the, the, the things that you did, the three of you, and some of the arrangements of oh, the yeah. songs one were... One of my favorite was that Sunrise Sunrise. That's the one sunset. I watched last night. Damn, I, it's, it's on YouTube. Thing. It's beautiful. The I'd never heard an arrangement yeah, like that. That is Richard Holmes. He was a rehearsal pianist when I was doing my television shows. And I thought he was so good because Paddy Stone would always do a big number. And he would always ask Richard, how can we change that tempo? And how can we, what can we jump from there to there? And, and 
Richard was wonderful at putting these together. And so I'm, I, when I did cabaret and things abroad, now, uh, Richard came with me. He was my musical director for many years, and he did fabulous stuff. Yes. And and he did all the song by songs. That was all his all his arrangements. And that one I loved because yes. it was so the three of you. The and it that's um, I mean it's on YouTube at the moment. Yes, um, I, so, I believe. So, so, so I've got to I've got to hear that. So one. <laughs> there was there was that, and also um, uh, Secretary is not a toy. It's great. <laughs> and I was I was very pleased to hear that they'd kept all the original references because it's all the American references like F. A. O. Schwartz. And yes. Fly, oh, yes. Lionel, which is not yes. known in England, yeah. but of course is, yeah. you know, part of the song. So I didn't know if they'd trying to rewrite that. Yeah, well, like so. we kept that, like we had the, all those in. Um, I'm still here. Oh yes, yes, you know. of course. On the Tony Awards, you sang "I'm Still Here," and then in the '80s, of course, you then went back to Follies yes. to play Phyllis yes. opposite Julia, yes. playing Sally, and that the London, one, which is a wonderful. fantastic show. That was wonderful because. When we walked on together, the whole audience roared. So all, yeah. all, all the gay guys were back in. Oh, it was, <laughs> one, it was wonderful. It that was, was, and that was a fantastic show. It was great. and Yeah, I, I, I thought that was beautifully done. Yes. I thought it was great. And I loved the new book because it wasn't as dark. and It wasn't everybody having nervous breakdowns. You know, just let, let's just have one person have a nervous breakdown. Yes, know? absolutely. Um, and... Uh, I liked doing. I loved uh, Country House. That was that was a very hard song, and I loved doing that. Yes. Because there was no downbeat. If you all you heard was. So if you got lost, oh my because God. then it would change key. Heard then you something. Am I still in the same verse, or am I missed it? You know. But it was a, but it was a wonderful one to do, and and I liked. Um, Ah, oh, but underneath, yes, the bubble number. Yes, you know, that yes. was fun. Yes, because that was changed from um, there was another Lucy. number. Lucy, Lucy, and also in I think the original production was only one act, wasn't it? And there's I don't know. There's the original production was only one act. So, yeah. um, and the London revival was of course the, the two acts. You had the second act. You know, started yeah. the first act ended with the. I loved all the plastic with the girls great. behind them in blue lights. Yes. I thought that was that was lovely. And of course, I get the Stephen Sondheim monthly thing because oh, yes. I'm one of the patrons. And so um, I was reading that today, and there was Sally Ann Triplett who played the young Phyllis, oh, and the wonderful girl who played the young Sally, that young Sally Julie. Um, <gasps> There was a, she was having a big article written. It was just those two kids were so wonderful. Oh, yes. They came in and played. The, the I didn't realise it was Sally Ann Triplett. Yes. Well, she's yeah. you know, a great star now. Yeah. So. And, and oh, the other well, it was the, the it was what was fantastic about Follies was that it, the entire cast to have an all star cast in this great show. I mean, it's yeah. wonderfully written with beautiful songs yes. and these amazing characters and seeing all these people back on stage again I together. I think it's and probably his best score, I so. think. And the overture is the best overture ever written. Yes. It's just, it just thrilled me every night. That and the South Pacific o- uh, overture. Oh, yes, when yes. I did, when I did that, and sitting in Drury Lane and hearing boom, 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 dum, dum, dum. Every night, it's just like goosebumps. <laughs> I'm in this. I'm in this. Oh. And, and but to have uh, when we did side by side, it, the, the thrill of doing the show, and then the door would open on the side, and Stephen would come and he'd stand in the wings, and I'd I'd be, I'd be sitting on one of the stools and I think we have just done two hours on this gentleman and there he is. Yes. Uh, <sighs> Just amazing, just amazing. What's wonderful about Side by Side by Sondheim is that it's been added to over the years. Yes. So it's now expanded, so it now yes, includes, it includes all the, all the know, other stuff. stuff yes. I don't, I don't know whether you'll... I've seen a lot of different ones, and yes. I also did one on Pasadena where I did the narrator. Oh, right, yes. Uh, and they did a wonderful yeah. show. Terry Ralston, who was over in England doing company, she was yes. in it. And and uh, it was... It was wonderful and I thought as I was listening I thought yes 
they've done the same running order. It's funny, with the audience, if you do that running order, you get the order. Right. I've been to some others where they've only changed something a little bit. Doesn't grab them for some reason. Yes. Doesn't grab them as much as that original running order. Because, you know, when you have a success, people always say, what made it? You, you never know. Yeah. That's why we didn't change. We didn't have an orchestra when we went to Broadway. Because, you know, Hal Prince said, you can have what you like. And we said, we don't know what makes it so successful. Can we leave it as it is? And he said, absolutely. It did it in London, and it did it on Broadway <clears throat> when we started. Because no curtain we walked. Well, we got very nice applause for the opening number. And got nice applause for when Mama was married. And, that. and then over the evening, they started to yell and shout and things. I mean, it was the most star-studded thing I've ever seen. I mean, you just look along the rows of people. It became the ticket to see it, the show oh, to see it. They, Everyone but just came They all in came to... to the opening night. Every star, including the, the people like Collins, who had done Follies. Right, yes, and, yes. You know, yes. all these people came... And at the end, they all just stood up and yelled. And it's, I still maintain the running order is what is, is the, the cherry on top. Yes, yes. Whatever we do, the running order did it. Yes, yes. You know. I will, I will revisit it one more time. Because <laughs> so. there's, there's, there's been other shows since. There's also Putting It Together. Yeah. Um, which uses a kind of a storyline conceit yeah. but the simplicity of Side by Side by Sometime well it was, was because we were the first yes. you know the other people have tried to add to it because otherwise it'll look the same yes you know so that's why we were just lucky enough that we could just sit there because we said none of us are going off stage we're going, there's going to be no empty seat we're just, just sit and watch each other the only time we went off was before the 11th hour numbers our big numbers yes we just all left when you all had your your individual and then, moments yeah and so. then David David came up but other than that we stayed on we we just watched each other we listened to each other and I I said to the other two whenever one of us is singing yes the other two watches you we yes. don't take our eyes off. Yes. You know. And uh, on the opening, on the opening night on Broadway, Julie was singing Broadway Baby, which Stephen said, "But it, it, it's a fast number." And Julie said, "Not anymore." <laughs> <laughs> he was wonderful about it because that's hard when he's written it to be one of those. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Broadway Baby. You think, you know, really. yeah, but, uh, and so. Uh, she did her now when she well, I mean it must the applause must have been about five minutes and we're David and I are sitting there and we had a thing where if we crossed behind each other we would always touch each other yes because I said let's let people know that we're not just three singers fighting each other yeah and she came past me and she touched my shoulder and she said top <laughs> <laughs> how wonderful so I said Wait until I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. But that's what's so clear from song by song is the chemistry between the three of you. And there's a moment, where, there's the one where you do, you do, uh, you could drive a person crazy, and you know you've got David Kerman in track. Yes. <laughs> so doing that. And then a few years ago, you did you can drive a person crazy yes. with Leah Salona and Maria Friedman and Ruthie Henshaw, yes. and the four of you on stage. Did, and that was wonderful. We did, oh, they, the, we did that for, for Hey Mr. Producer. Oh, is that what it Cameron's is? Cameron's big, okay, big right. charity. Yes. And that was lovely because uh, they, they phoned and said, come on over and, um, and, and join in. So I said, oh, okay. So I came in <laughs> and I worked with these three young people with me at the end. But that's why I, I did that. The low note. Oh, that's you know. that, but that low note is wonderful. <laughs> and they, they turn the, the head snap round. <laughs> no, that, was, that was great fun. Yes. That was great fun, yes. Also, Julie, you know, Julie arranged that whole thing. Oh, really? Yeah, she put that all together. That's fantastic. Yeah. Did um, you ever see Honk? I've never seen Honk. She directed it, didn't she? But with the two boys, they, they 
Well, they've, they've, they've appeared many times on this podcast. They're um, lovely. And they, they're they, so, so lovely. Because they come over every so often because they're working with uh, two American writers. So I see them whenever they come over. Yes. We always have... We always have a meal, and they're ju- oh, they're just delightful. And hot, I saw it up in uh, Darpa, and I love. I have never laughed so much. My my jaws. I, I was laughing for the whole evening. It was so brilliantly done. It's my favourite little musical. Ever. Yes. I remember when they were starting out because I grew up in Devon. Yes. And they used to do shows at the Northcott Theatre, and they did just so there. And they yes. also did one on about Tutankhamun. But yes, I think it was just called Tutankhamun. Out of all the roles you've played, do you have an, any particular favourites or there? Yeah, I would say that was the week that was. Yes. Side by side. What have happened to Baby Jane? And um, the one woman show. Um, Shirley Valentine. I loved him, Shirley Valentine. Shirley I Valentine. did Shirley Valentine for about a year. Oh, really? Uh, not, I did like three months, and then time off in three months, because it's very tiring. Shirley. Yes, yes. Um, I did it in Philadelphia and San Francisco. And what, what, what. Oh, how wonderful. wonderful. So you wonderful. really yeah. took it around. So. It was lovely. Yes. I loved doing that. It's a real tour de force, isn't it? I mean, it's the, some of the roles you have played and are created have been quite fantastic. Yeah, I've been very so. lucky. Very lucky, because, well... In England, I think I was kind of pigeonholed as a musical comedy star, but here, I never was. So I was, I got to play, you know, I did the rivals and things like that. I got to play, and a fun thing was, uh, somebody I had worked with said, you sing as well. (laughs) And they didn't know that for years, because I'd not been... So do you think it's easier to be in America is more accepting that people are they have multiple skills whereas in England they tend to say oh I mean they used to be very much maybe in the past you're an it's, actor it's, that can move or you can it's difficult because scene. in England the wonderful thing is you can play a zonking lead one year and you can play Carlotta like in Follies and another year and nobody says oh what happened to their career you know people can play big parts and then they can play very small part, like Judy Dench in in uh, the, uh, the Shakespeare. Yes, yes. You know, it uh, that is allowed there, which is kind of not allowed here. Your big stars are expected to only play the huge big roles. Role, the big roles. It's, they they lose out on a lot of wonderful parts because uh, they don't feel they can drop. Drawn down. Don't. So that's why you get some of these big stars in the big Broadway shows yes. and then they suddenly don't work for ages because they're not getting these parts that are equal to what they've played. That's it. And, that's terribly and, sad. And, yes, it is. Um, but what you can do is you, as long as you're playing leads or whatever you're playing, you can jump around. Yes, you yes. You can do a musical, you can do a play, you can do a film, you can do a television show. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, I mean, Halle Berry's doing a television series. Yes, yes. You know, yeah. So he, 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 they don't say, oh, but we are the, of the theatre. You can do that, but it's an entirely different thing because there was, I forget, there was a lovely film actress that they wanted to put into Nine to play the glamour lady. Yes. And her, um, I forget who she was, but her, her managers talked her out of it because they said it's not... There's too many people in it. It's not you're too not the stuff. lead. You're not the you're not That's the shocking great lead. So. That's such a shame. I, I I like nine, but I I wasn't a big fan of it. Film version. So what, the film I wasn't version. a big fan of the film version. It was a bit of a mess <laughs> compared to the stage nobody's show. Gonna, nobody's going to commit suicide over him. No, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think he's lovely in some things, but that's not that. They should have had Antonio Banderas. Yes. He should have yes, played yes. it. It would have changed the whole thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because to me, he was like a producer and they were all after him because he was a producer yes no they were all after him because he was the sexiest thing on two legs yeah yes yes that's what makes the women what they are yeah it's and it's like, got to not something like nine has to be based on passion and it's you know it's it's got to and it was yeah, just yeah, yeah no, it, no, it, it kind of so. missed the point a little bit yep. so a bit of a mess <laughs> I but I can't of... wait for 
Rob Marshall to but do. Into the Woods. I am actually very excited about this, and there's a lot of... Yeah, because I was so upset about Sweeney Todd. They took every bit of humour out of that film. I mean, she's supposed to have humour, and he has humour, even though he's going mad. He still does things. Yes. And it was gone. It was all... Yeah, it was a little bit too just too stylized, and it, I saw, the last time I saw it live, was... Julia McKenzie and Dennis Quilly. Wasn't that fabulous? And it was in the Cottesloe as well. So you you were on the top of it, and it was just on Jonathan Tunick's new orchestration. Oh, yeah. Just and, and we know. and we went to see it. And we sat in the middle. And, oh, I know. I can't remember the word. There's one where she screams out a word. I know. She she looked straight at me. And she went disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I bet cockney. you two have had so much fun <laughs> in shows and just... It's... Well, my favourite story, <laughs> my favourite story. When we were doing Side by Side, Julia and her husband, Jerry, had just moved to a house. And they had not much money and they got this wonderful house in Richmond. Yes. So he was. he got a book and he learnt how to... To air conditioning and, and heating and all this, he got, then he got people to come in and to check it and give him the okay. So, and they were painting and they were doing and laying. They were doing everything. And we're doing one night and we finished something and Julia went like this and there's paint. <laughs> she, she didn't see it because it was there. I got so hysterical. I thought I'm not going to be able to sing another number in this show. Oh, that's oh, wonderful. Pain. There's all pain down the front of her arms. <laughs> <laughs> and then one time we were doing A Boy Like That, and I came out and I forgot the lines, and I went, A boy like that could kill your brother. Forget that thing and buy another. And Julia <laughs> sounded like somebody underwater. She went, Oh, what do and Stephen was out there and he came back and he said I don't mind you going wrong but don't rhyme it because <laughs> <laughs> then he'll get that. that's very funny that's great oh how wonderful <laughs> Melissa Martin, thank you so much for a wonderful afternoon. Hey, thank you. Your amazing, wonderful stories. Oh, and thank uh, you. I hope one day, I have, this, I have this wish, maybe one day we will somehow be able to get you, David, and Julia together. I would love that. I, I think, think that, that would be hysterically I, funny I, and I, I, wonderful. I don't know how you'll get through it. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> we may feel, have several hours I left. I feel of. sorry for you, but we'd have a wonderful time. <laughs> it's been lovely to meet you, and, and it's you been too. lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much, and um, I will. Uh, I would recommend people to visit your website. Thank you. Which is www. Uh, Millicentmartin.com. Millicentmartin.com, and yes. you can listen to you singing "I Never Do Anything Twice." Right at the beginning. Wonderfully, I have to say, my, one you. of my favourite. That was when we did it at the uh, Barbican. Yes, yes. When the Stephen Barbican, was yeah. supposed to come over and he fell oh. and he hit his head and he uh, 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 and he's, I, I think either that or he got an infection in the ear and, and he couldn't uh, travel. He couldn't fly because he was supposed to be over there. Right. That, that was oh, that was a wonderful. That movie. was a celebration concert yeah. for him. And yes. then, oh, what a shame! But that that version of it is is one of my favourites, oh, and thank it's you. just the delivery. There are some wonderful things on YouTube to see of your career over the years. Oh yes, including I'm... every episode of A Bird's Eye View. <laughs> I couldn't um, believe they they re re released it. it. Yes, <laughs> I, hope, I hope you've been on to your getting your royalties. <laughs> yeah, but. The, the most wonderful man who did that was Sheldon Leonard, who was the producer, yes. who was in every old movie playing ga a gangster. <laughs> he talked like that. He got this wonderful voice, very very bright man, and he 
had a vocabulary that one time he said a sentence to me and I didn't understand any of it. And I said, I'm, I'm sorry, John, you are so bright, but I, I didn't understand one word of that. And he said, oh, I am sorry, Melissa. I will reiterate. <laughs> Apologies for the rather abrupt end, but every time we reached a point where we were going to stop, we ended up chatting again. Hopefully, one day we may see revivals or even lost musical concerts of Expresso Bongo, The Crooked Mile, or Our Man Crichton. Until then, at least we have the great cast albums. And if you don't know them, please search them out. There's some real forgotten gems out there. I would also recommend the book A Tanner's Worth of Tune by Adrian Wright, which is available on Amazon and gives a great insight into the history of the English musical. My great thanks to Millicent Martin for taking time during her birthday month to chat to us. It was a wonderful afternoon. And thanks as well to Mark Alexander and also to Kelly Martin who helped make this happen. Please do look up her website, www.millicentmartin.com.